That's another mistake I made for years where my net worth and what I brought in as a business yearly defined my worth to myself. If I didn't hit the metric and the goal that I had set out to hit because I am so driven and so ambitious and a go-getter and a getter dunner too, When I didn't hit that number, I remember it was like December 31st of 2021 and I didn't hit my revenue target for that year. I was so disappointed. I couldn't even have fun at the New Year's Eve party that I went to. So how do you turn your business into an actual brand? Well, my name is Bijal Patel and I've had 13 years of corporate experience working at big Fortune 500 companies and I'm taking all of that juicy firsthand experience and have brought it into my company launch. Within this podcast, you're going to learn about branding, vision, identity, mindset, and how to scale your business to the next level. So let's go ahead and own your brand. This is going to be more of a mindset focus, but do you like you? Do you love you? And so a lot of times when I'm talking to different people, they ask me the question, hey, how can I have the social media presence that you have where you are authentically who you are and you don't care what other people think? And the question I ask people surprises them a little bit where I'm like, well, do you like you? And like, well, what do you mean? Of course I like you. Like, of course I like myself, Beecho. Like, what kind of question is that? It's a dumb question. No, no, no. But be serious. Do you really like you? And the reason I know this is four years ago, when I had just gotten fired from my job in corporate America, I had had my second baby and I had been a star employee up until that point, actually. And after I had my second baby and I was breastfeeding and I went on an extended maternity leave and I came back to work, it just was not received the same by my boss. When I left, everything was great. They wanted to bring champagne to my review. I got an enormous pay raise and I was like the sought after designer there in that group. But when I came back and I had to do all of those challenges that as a working mom who is breastfeeding their their child, you know, I'm doing the pumping in the car. I'm pumping in like a closet at work and I'm trying to get as much milk as I can. and I'm trying to feed the baby during lunch and all of these things that you're trying to juggle. You're not getting any sleep. They were not as happy with my performance. And I ended up getting let go during that period of time. And it was just absolutely devastating to me. And I remember when I got let go and I left that place, I felt this relief though in that moment, even though I needed that job, like we were dual income household, I felt this enormous wave of relief that ended up coming over me. And as I got in the car and I was driving away, it's just when all the emotions hit me. And I just started crying, like just nonstop. Like I felt so much pain. I literally thought I was going to die. I had never failed at a job in my life. I'm an Enneagram three. I'm an achiever, which by the way, Enneagram, best tool out there in terms of personality. I love this. We use it with our clients. And as the achiever that I'm in, I felt like my entire identity was stripped away and someone gave me an F. And for somebody who is an overachiever, is really successful, To get an F at something that I was so passionate about just shocked my like entire being. And it was through those years that actually I started to learn who I really was. And a couple of months after that happened, that's when I launched, launched. That's when I actually started this business. It was through that fire that the Phoenix rose, that I was like finally done with it, that I could not work for another man who was 55 years old in corporate America again. I was done being their workhorse. I was done being a corporate slave. I was done grinding my face off for not enough money, even though they told me that was the best that I was going to get because I was already the highly, most highly paid designer on the team. And when I started launch, I started to find out who I really was. I started to be able to look in the mirror and ask myself, do I really like me? Do you like you? And when I was able to stop and reflect, I started to then be able to go on my own personal journey, which is why I can talk about this with you guys, is I went on the journey. I read the books. I I joined masterminds. I paid for high ticket coaching. I got mentors. I got surrounded by a community of people who I was uplifted through. And the reason I was uplifted is because I saw how many things within myself that I really wanted to correct. I wasn't the person that I thought I was. And that's even hard to admit to now, even to be able to just say that and say, I was really successful 
and I was hiding behind the cloak of that success. It looked great. I won a lot of design awards, a lot of design awards. I got to be on the best project. I was always like, I was always like the right hand woman to my boss. Like all of that was great, but all of those accolades, all of those trophies, all of those, all of that recognition and success, monetary and otherwise, even having people's respect, it was all a cloak. I was hiding behind an identity that wasn't really me. And I was, and the reason I was doing that is probably why a lot of people do it because you don't really like who you are as a person. And it takes a lot of time to reflect on the inside. It takes journaling. It takes meditation. It takes stillness. It takes asking yourself better questions to say, who am I for real? But when you do like who you are, which takes a period of time. And I encourage you to go on this self-discovery journey to be able to know yourself. Because if you are able to look in the mirror and see all of your flaws, no, no matter how painful it is and no matter how much you're avoiding it, you start to get real with yourself. Hey, so quick pause. Have you gotten a big piece of value from any of the episodes so far? If you have, I would absolutely love if you could share this with someone else you think could benefit from this. A principle of mine is to give it forward because that like energy creates more like energy and it'll all come back to you in the form of karma. So just want to say thanks again for listening and let's get back to the show. When you get real with yourself, you can now at least identify the things that matter to you. You can say, I really like that. Wow, I hadn't even known that about myself. Or you can say, that's an area that could use some improvement. That's a challenge and I'm gonna treat it as an opportunity because I wanna be the best me that I can be. So one of our core behaviors at my company launch that I'm the CEO and founder for is 1% growth. We believe in 1% growth daily. So we don't want perfectionists. We don't, we actually, I actually push away from perfectionism because perfectionism had me in shackles for decades. Because if I wasn't per- perfect, if I wasn't a perfectionist in my work and what I did, I wasn't really good enough. And so when we practice this 1% daily growth, me and my team, and I lead with this, I actually encourage people and my team to make mistakes faster. And the only way you can do that is if you have self-awareness of who you actually are, all the good traits, all the ones that could use improvement. And there's probably a lot that's in the middle, but you know, focus on three at a time and say, what is it that I actually want to change? What is it that I want to improve on for this quarter or even potentially a word for the entire year is a great way to have like a theme and know what you're looking at, what you're advancing towards. So It's through the activity of having self-awareness that you get a deeper understanding of who you really are. And when you get to know who that person is, you start to like that person. It's literally a journey of falling in love with yourself again. It's believing in who you are. Because I'll tell you this, as you climb higher and higher and up, it is true that the people that you thought were your fans are going to come out and sometimes not be your fans. And you're going to be disappointed by that. So you always want to be rooting for yourself. And where I'm at today, I'm so lucky to have really supportive mentors, people I'm close to. And my husband is like my number one fan. My life partner is what I really call him is my number one fan. And I am so beyond blessed and grateful to have that. But even with that type of support system, it it gets thinner, it gets smaller as you go up because it is a rule of thumb of people are happy that you're successful when you're, as long as you're not past their level. You'll start to notice when you do pass people's level, there's gonna be certain people who don't like you anymore and that's okay. That's okay because that just means that that's work that they need to spend time on doing. But that's why I asked the question, do you like you? When you like you, you can face that noise and you can prune off or you can step away from certain relationships that are no longer serving you. Because I tell you this, if someone is not rooting for you, if someone is not a fan of you winning, get away from that person as soon as you can. Back away from that person, get out of their energy field because it is robbing from you. So you rooting for yourself, you believing in yourself, you growing your self-confidence all adds to you having self-worth that is not connected to your net worth. That's another mistake I made for years 
where my net worth and what I brought in as a business yearly defined my worth to myself. If I didn't hit the metric and the goal that I had set out to hit because I am so driven and so ambitious and a go-getter and a getter-dunner too, when I didn't hit that number, I remember it was like December 31st of 2021 and I didn't hit my revenue target for that year. I was so disappointed. I couldn't even have fun at the New Year's Eve party that I went to. And my husband noticed and I was just in my own head, just beating myself up over and over and over and over again. And after that New Year's and I started 2022, I said, no more, no more. You thought you were past this, you're not past this. You're gonna focus on you liking you. And when that happens, that's how you have your empowered voice, what I call your empowered voice. The true authentic you starts to come through. That is what defines your brand better than anything out there. When people know that you know who you are and you are completely secure in who that person is, without needing any kind of external validation. Don't get me wrong, it's nice, but you don't need it. I don't require it. I don't require championing from other people. I don't require someone to be in the audience rooting me on. I don't require having a record month or a record year, year over year. I don't require that. That's what makes a difference in terms of longevity and who's staying in the game and why my message and my personal brand connect so hard with my audience is because I like me. So I invite you to be able to, do you like you? Ask yourself that question, yes, no, maybe. From there, I want you to be able to take an audit and say, just write out in one column, what do you like about yourself? What do you not like about yourself? And what's kind of in between? And pick the three things that you wanna focus on growing. Again, it could be one year, one word that you use for the year, but don't forget what you like about yourself while you're growing the things you don't. And I promise, when you start to like you, your energy level is going to grow and you're going to become absolutely magnetic and opportunities are going to come to you. Suddenly people are going to ask you to speak on their podcast. People are going to start engaging with your content. People are going to pay you to come speak at conferences and events like they do for me. That's going to happen for you because it all starts with you liking you.